Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I wanted to talk about some of my favourite classics in translation. So as I'm having a bit of a non-Victorian classics month, I thought I would talk today about some of my favourite translated classics. I'm not very well read at all in classics in translation. There are a lot of classics from a lot of different countries that I'm interested in reading in the future that I have not got to yet. Um, you will notice as I go through this list that it is pretty dominated by Russian, French and Japanese classics. It's not the most varied list um, and it's not a very complete list at all. These are just some classics in translation that I've really enjoyed before. I've also just realised looking through this list that I do not have a single female writer on this list. Every writer on this list is male, um, which considering it's Women in Translation Month makes me a bit sad. I don't think I've read many translated classics from female writers at all, so that is something I would like to change. I'm not going to rank these, I'm just going to go through the authors in alphabetical order, but here are 15 authors and their books that were not originally written in English that I really enjoy. The first book is a novella called The Alienist by Machado de Assis. This is a 19th century Brazilian book originally written in Portuguese that I really enjoyed. I read this very recently um, and I thought it was just really interesting and really entertaining. It's a kind of satirical story about this psychiatrist who sets up this asylum and begins to put more and more people in it as he decides that more and more of the town where he lives um, is not quite right until he begins to question what it means to be sane and what it means to not be sane and whether sanity is the norm or not. It's really fascinating, really entertaining and one I would highly recommend. The next author I wanted to mention is the 20th century Italian writer Italo Calvino. I have hardly read anything by Italo Calvino but I fairly recently read this which is The Distance of the Moon which I just really really loved. I really really enjoyed his writing and I'm definitely keen to read more by him in the future. I sort of had in my head that Italo Calvino would be one of those very like dense literary writers who I wouldn't necessarily get on with because it would all be a bit confusing in the kind of way I find Borges but actually I found this weird in the right way and weird in a way that I understood and while these stories were quite surreal I really enjoyed the writing style and I really understood what was going on so I would highly recommend Italo Calvino this was a great place to start and hopefully I will read more by him in the future the next writer I want to talk about is Anton Chekhov Chekhov is a Russian writer most known for his plays I love Chekhov very very much um, I have seen lots of his plays my favourite three are Uncle Vanya which is from 1899 Three Sisters which is from 1901 and The Cherry Orchard which is from 1904 I've also read some of his short stories which I really like as well. Chekhov is just a wonderful writer and a truly brilliant playwright. I think the way he writes dialogue and the way he writes and interprets and understands characters is just fascinating. Like the exploration of kind of the human condition I guess is just fantastic. The way he explores late 19th century and early 20th century Russian society is just fantastic and just so fascinating. I just absolutely love his work so much. I think he's such a wonderful writer, such a clever writer and just yeah, his characters are so well-rounded and so complicated and the way they talk, I just I just love it so much. It's so good. I highly recommend Chekhov's works. The next novel I want to mention is the oldest thing that I am mentioning here and that is a Chinese novel, Monkey or the Journey to the West by Wu Cheneng. So this is a 16th century Chinese novel which tells the story of this kind of mythical magic monkey who is like part god but also like is out of favour with the gods because um, he keeps messing things up and being a trickster and trying to like steal things off people. He's a very entertaining fun character and we basically follow Monkey's life but also his interaction with a kind of scholar and religious figure who he kind of helps on his quest to find a particular kind of holy text. It's a really enjoyable novel. It's just so entirely different from any other novel that I've ever read. Um, and one of the things I really enjoyed about it, but I also found so strange about it, was, um, and I assume this is the case in all translations, and it wasn't just my translation, but like the narrative voice constantly like comments on what's going on in this just really different way. I find it really hard to explain, um, but it's basically sort of you know, the narrative voices are being like, oh look, Monkey's off playing his tricks again, isn't he sweet? The narrative voice just 
sounds fond of Monkey and like whenever Monkey is like doing tricks and things and misbehaving um, the narrative voice and tone is really like indulgent towards him in this really lovely way. A lot of it is quite like a kind of episodical quest narrative which I really enjoy too um, and it's just yeah very different quite odd but one that I really enjoyed. The next writer I want to mention is Victor Hugo. Um, I've only read one book by him so far though I'm hoping to pick up The Hunchback of Notre Dame very soon. The book I've read by him is Les Miserables. This is a French classic originally published in 1862 and it tells the story of a lot of different characters and their lives um, and their kind of struggles with poverty um, in Paris and elsewhere in France in the 19th century and we especially follow the kind of complicated relationship and rivalry between a man called Jean Valjean um, who has been imprisoned for theft um, and the kind of guard who is chasing him after he escapes and calls Javert but there are so many other characters as well if you know the musical you vaguely know the plot um, but also there is so much more in the book it's so long and like every time you meet a new character there's like 10 chapters about their backstory but I don't care because I love it so much and I love the writing style another thing I really love about Les Miserables which I think anyone who knows it from popular culture and the musical might not expect is that it's really really funny it's like I think Victor Hugo has that similar balance to Dickens between like emotion and comic style and there's just some like some wonderfully witty one-liners in Les Miserables which I just love. I read it when I was about 14 and there are, I still know some sentences like off by heart because they entertain me so much. I really need to reread Les Miserables one day but it's so long that I really want to because it's so good. The next writer I want to mention is Henrik Ibsen. He is a Norwegian playwright um, and I love his work. I have seen and read four of his plays all of which I love. A Doll's House which was originally put on in 1879, Ghosts from 1881, Rosmus Hold from 1886 and Hedda Gabler from 1890. I love Ibsen's work so much. He reminds me of Chekhov in many ways in that I think his works really interestingly look at like society and the collapse of an old order um, and what might come next and also really interestingly look at like social issues and the human condition. Another thing that I think Ibsen's work deals with really interestingly is the position of women um, and the issues with marriage as a state and an institution in the late 19th century. Some of his plays are just amazingly proto-feminist in like the best ways um, and really like champion equality um, and individual freedoms and I just yeah I love his work so much. Highly recommend all of his plays. The next writer I want to mention is Yasushi Inoue. He is a Japanese 20th century writer whose work I really love. I've read two of his books The Hunting Gun and Life of a Counterfeiter um, from 1961 and 1965 respectively. I really love his short stories. I think he has such a wonderful way of capturing characters and kind of moments in a short space in time. I think he writes wonderfully about memory and sort of what it means to be human um, and about kind of looking back on your life and interpreting it differently in just a really wonderful way. I love his work so much. Um, he's one of my favourite Japanese writers and I'd really like to read some more by him because it's been a while since I read his work but I really enjoyed both of those when I read them um, and definitely an author I want to read more of in the future. The next book I want to mention is another Russian classic and that is um, Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak which is a modern classic from 1957. This is a love story I suppose in many ways um, which is set during the Russian Revolution and afterwards um, and explores the effect of the Russian Revolution on the people within Russia um, and specifically on this man Dr. Zhivago um, who is kind of caught between two very different women. Which I think it's such a wonderful novel. It's so well written, it's so beautiful and so powerful and the way it explores the history that it is exploring and that particular time period is just fascinating. I also think it is the only book I've ever read where I genuinely believe that one person was in love with two people. Um, I've never read another book where I believed that, though I have read other books that tried to make me believe that um, and it's just fantastic. I highly highly recommend it, it's such an amazing novel. The next book I want to mention is All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque. This is a German classic from 1929 and this is a fascinating novel which draws on the author's own experience in the First World War to examine the First World War and a soldier's life during it. Um, it's a truly fantastic and compelling novel that is just 
staggeringly written and really explores um, the difficulties and problems and the horrors of the First World War in a really compelling way. I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in the history of the First World War. The next book I want to mention is um, Bot-chan by Natsumi Saseki. This is a Japanese classic from 1906, which I really enjoyed. It tells the story of a young man who moves to a new place to become a school teacher and all of the complicated exploits and dramas that go on in this small town. It's a really funny, entertaining, um, charming novel and I highly recommend it. The next author I want to mention is the Japanese writer Junichiro Tanizaki. He is an early 20th century Japanese writer whose works I absolutely love. I've read three of his books. Some prefer Nettles from 1929, A Cat, A Man and Two Women from 1936 and The Makioka Sisters from 1948. I really enjoy all of these three books. Um, Some prefer Nettles is about the breakup of a marriage and um, the kind of complex tensions in early 20th century Japan between like traditional Japanese culture and imported Western culture. A Cat, A Man and Two Women is about a man and his ex-wife and his new wife and his cat who really he loves much more than either of the women. And the Makioka Sisters is an amazing novel, my favourite of the three, um, which explores the relationships between a group of sisters and, and their very different like paths in life and is a really fantastic novel for looking at the position of women in mid 20th century Japanese society. And again, like some of Nettles, looks really interestingly at the kind of clash between um, traditional Japanese and Western culture. Um, it's a really, really amazing Amazing book, just fantastic, and I highly, highly recommend it. The next author I want to mention is Leo Tolstoy. I have read two of his bigger books, Anna Karenina from 1878 and War and Peace from 1867. I've also read some of his shorter fiction, which I've really enjoyed as well. Leo Tolstoy is such an interesting writer. I really love his works and the way he explores um, mid 19th century Russian society. His characterization and his love stories and his exploration of family is just fantastic and fascinating as well. Um, I loved War and Peace, but I will say that I prefer. Anna Karenda because I do feel the War and Peace is probably too long and there are some chapters where he doesn't really say anything. Anna Karenda though I didn't really feel that with because um, I just absolutely loved it and found it so rich and compelling and the characterization and the exploration of um, the relationships between these characters is just so amazing and um, he really writes those kind of big society novels following a giant like sweep of society and lots of different characters and all of their different relationships in a way that I really really love um, and War and Peace is set during the Napoleonic Wars as well which is really interesting. Love both of these and highly recommend Leo Tolstoy. The next one I want to recommend is another Russian classic and that is First Love and Other Stories by Ivan Turgenev. First Love was originally published in 1860. I really like Turgenev's writing style and I definitely want to read more by him in the future. I've read his novella First Love twice and I've read some of his other short short stories as well all of which I really enjoyed he's a really interesting writer who writes really interestingly about kind of like coming of age and growing up and people on the turn from childhood to adulthood which is very much what first love is about um, and it's really really interesting I think he has a real way with words and a real way of like capturing characters and um, emotions and kind of turning points in this really clever way so I highly recommend his books. Next I want to mention Jules Verne who is a 19th century French writer. I have not read very much Jules Verne um, in fact I've only read Around the World in 80 Days from 1873 but I absolutely love Loved it. I thought it was truly fantastic and I really really want to read more by him in the future. I was just so pleasantly surprised. Around the World in 80 Days is um, about this man who um, makes a bet with someone that he can travel around the world in 80 days um, and he's not really interested in travelling. He doesn't want to see lots of different places. He just wants to win the bet. So he is an English man and he travels around the world um, trying to make it in 80 days along with his French valet um, and it follows all the people that he meets along the way and I really really love it and it's really fascinating it's really good fun um, and I really like the ending there's some like things in it which are much more progressive than I would expect for a mid 19th century novel which I really enjoyed and um, so highly highly recommend that one. The next author I want to mention is Stefan Zweig. He is an early 20th century Austrian writer um, and the book by him that I've read is Letters from an Unknown Woman and other stories which I really really enjoyed. Just really liked his writing style and he has that kind of interesting looking back nostalgic writing style which I really enjoy. Um, Letters from an Unknown Woman is about a 
man who receives this letter from a woman who he hasn't heard of um, who has like met him and seen him at various points in his life even though he has been unaware of her um, and it's really really interesting. I really enjoyed the other stories in that collection as well and I just think his writing was very powerful um, and thoroughly enjoyable so definitely another author that I would like to read more from in the future and that I highly recommend. So that is it for today. Those are some classics in translation that I really enjoyed. As I said I do not think that I'm very well read at all when it comes to translated classics so if you have a recommendations for me please leave them down below in the comments and please let me know I would especially welcome um, classics in translation from female writers because as I said this list is much more male than I was expecting so if you have any favorite classics by female writers that are in translation please do let me know and I will read them at some point in the future so that is it for today thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video mm -hmm.